Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Struggle Create Strength. Struggle Create Strength is a mental health platform exemplifying that everyone has a story. No two stories are the same, but every story has the potential to help someone else. On today's episode, we have a special guest named Brandon Brigado. Brandon is 22 years old and is currently living and attending school in San Diego, California. He has a mindset that is like no other, but it did not come easy. He's going to be here today to give you some tips and tricks on what will work and what worked for him. I hope everyone enjoys and just remember everyone has a story. Also, this podcast is sponsored by Raincoast Clothing. Raincoast Clothing is a clothing company that embraces adventure. They suggest that you get outside, seek adventure and do everything to better yourself and better your mind. They've actually partnered up with me to create a t-shirt and if you buy one today, 100% of the proceeds go towards mental health. I hope everyone enjoys Brandon Brigado's story and just remember, everyone has a story. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on by the way. It's finally good to connect and this time hopefully we don't have any audio issues and it goes yeah. smooth and it's it's all all good that'll be good yeah so yeah. thank you for having me so to be here of course of course yeah so might as well get right into it uh do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of explain who brandon brigado is yeah absolutely so i to say majority of my life um i was playing ice hockey up until i was 21 um, did everything like travel around, played at prep school, played a little bit in juniors, played up in BC where you were, uh, and then ended over in Maryland and all. Um, so hockey was the vast majority of my life. I think when I was in that, in that kind of uh, chapter of being alive, it was just a lot of like, go, go, go. Um, pretty like, like alpha, I would honestly say maybe ego driven. Mm -hmm. Um, just like a lot of focus on status and like what you can achieve, which it's all good stuff, but it can be, it can be consuming on the internal for sure. So um, I think around September 20, uh, yeah, September 2018, I got my first concussion. Two weeks later, I get another concussion. And I think from there, it's just absolutely the next year, which is battling with um, obviously my mental health, but um, like physically, but also just like the internal of the home I'm living in here. Mm -hmm. So I think when I was recovering, uh, that was the first time where I just kind of actually sat and gained introspection with myself and was. You know, I had no other, th I had nothing else to do to occupy my mind. I couldn't watch videos, listen to podcasts or music when you're recovering from your concussions. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had to just sit there with my thoughts and kind of ask the questions of like, how am I feeling about the way I'm feeling um, now that I don't have hockey in my life anymore. And so I think the first three weeks, I really, I, I was struggling with like, yo, what can we find on the external out there that can fulfill me? Because like when we were growing up, we had a hockey, that was our label. You know, that's all we identified yeah. ourselves with. And I think that's it is a beautiful thing, but sometimes it can be a trap because if that's taken away from you, like, what do you have? Exactly. So after three weeks of not figuring out what can fill me on the outside, I think you just reframe the question and it was, you know what, like, why not be fulfilled that source of fulfillment internally just because I want to, mm -hmm. I know it sounds kind of like weird and cheesy, but it was a lot of self-preservation. That was like my last <laughs> resort. So I was like, you know what? All right, whatever. I'm going to focus on how to be like, I wanted to be like super invincible alpha, like in the hockey realm. Like, how can I be that now in my own mental state and close the window, my own mental state, um, like now with, with nothing in front of me. So I really got into mindfulness, you know, shifting the perspective of you can't control anything that happens on the external to you. I uh, like that quitting hockey, but you can always figure out how you want to react to it mm -hmm. and how you're going to actually see that as a positive. So one little mind hack that I had to force myself into is like, man that, instead of thinking man that sucks i'm stuck in my room for like five months without doing anything like you could have that perspective like dude i'm stuck in my room for five months like and i could do whatever I want, like read books like no, no one could bother me like i don't have to do any like responsibilities it's just like i had to psych myself out in those kind of ways so that i was kind of habitually now looking on the positive side of things mm -hmm. and that's kind of the start of like yeah, where I was in the hockey realm, how my mindset was just always go, go, go. And now I think I finally am taking time and step, taking time to step back and realize why am I thinking the way I'm thinking? How can I make the best out of whatever is placed in front of me in this life? Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I think one of the biggest things that you always talk about via social media is kind of mindset. And obviously coming from a bit of a background of concussions and having your mindset altered, and obviously having your life kind of altered, how did that 
all change and how have you kind of gotten to where you are today? Yeah, I think uh, I kind of had the, I, I, I adopted, adopted the delirious new perspective of like, yo, mom and dad, like these concussions didn't kill brain cells. Like they woke them up. Like yeah. I, was, I was just trying to psych myself out and honestly say, now I'm going to be the most aware person and I'm really going to take care of my mental health for sure. Because mm-hmm. I realized at the end of the day, even like I was talking to my buddies who were doing so well in hockey, you know, they're going on to D1 schools and like guys were talking to like NHL teams. Like at, at the end of it, they were still having those internal problems of they hit the bed. Um, and they like still, you know, battle with their thoughts and their own mindset and like looking at things towards negativity in life. And I thought like, no matter how successful you are on the outside, I think what I really wanted was true internal happiness mm-hmm. um, and like peace, whatever, whatever happens, whatever path I go to. So that's kind of a, a lot of that stemmed around like that kind of conversation with myself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you think, I know you kind of just touched on that is that no matter where you're playing at what level if you are playing if you're not that you're going to encounter some form of mental health uh, struggles or at least maybe a little bump in the road Um, have you seen that like you kind of said you did but have you noticed that especially when you were playing as well with teammates struggling or even other opponents struggling or just people in the hockey world have you noticed that that was kind of a big thing that was there but not necessarily talked about all that much i think uh it could have been talked to more i'd say from the from the top down the organization perspective mm-hmm. uh, everyone was really good with them like uh when we played out in canada they introduced a chap and they said he, he was a great guy if you ever had anything or any issues like come contact me mm-hmm. but uh the connections that really really like that i found we had able to have those conversations were maybe some more the veterans and honestly, my roommate, Paul, like we'd have some deep talks um, with like other teammates about, hey, man, like I, you know, I'm on a three game skid and I just, it could be stuff like with your, your girl or like your family at home yeah. and guys getting vulnerable. So I think it's just, it was human nature and problems to where um, other people were just struggling and they would kind of come to each other and open up. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, it was very hit or miss. It just happened like to be, if, if that guy was in the right time at, at the right place for that team, he'd come up. But I think I for sure would love to see that more from teams because that is a pretty mm-hmm. um, important part of of each player individually. And each player individually, they figure out themselves, they can all contribute more to the team system way more. For sure, yeah. What do you think they could actually do, though? Like, what do you think would be a beneficial thing for them to do, obviously, to give some people those resources? Yeah, I I think it's that. So that is a tough question because you can't force people to get into that, this conversation mindset if they don't. Mm-hmm. But I think... What I can see very important is the leadership team, you know, sitting those guys down and go, you guys have letters on your jerseys for a reason. Um, and anything in life too, you know, whether people mm-hmm. look up to you and just kind of understand like you, you're kind of blessed with that responsibility of you get to lead people. And so maybe put upon them to connect with all the guys individually and understand their stories and be like, listen, like at the end of the day, we have the same goal of, of we want to win these games or in life, we have the same goal. We want to succeed as most we can. Mm-hmm. Let's unpack the stuff in our own heads that are getting in our own way. Mm-hmm. Um, that can slow slow everyone down individually and ultimately the team. So maybe um, having those conversations with the leaders up in front and say, Hey, these are human issues. Like you're, it's not, they're not too cheesy. <laughs> you're not too cool to like deal with the stuff in your head. You know, it's, it's at the end of the day, every human has these issues. Let's address them so that we can focus on the stuff that we love in life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And even just going off of that, you saying do the things that you love in life. What are some of the things that you've kind of, I guess, found the love for since you've stopped playing hockey? I mean, I kind of have an idea, but what are (laughs) obviously some of those things? Oh, one of the big ones, like a weird curveball from hockey is like yoga. I just, I couldn't do anything in my room. I was recovering, so I started doing some yoga. And then when my head got better, I was like, the handstands are really cool. So I didn't really get into that kind of stuff. But honestly, one of the biggest fulfilling things was, um, Everyone, when you look at them on the street, they just look like, you know, normal going throughout their day. But everyone has so much depth and a real, real, like, important story to them. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, kind of your whole brand, like, struggle creates strength. You ask them about their struggles, you get people going and, like, the adversity they got through. And, like, you know, how they're here today to be sitting on that park bench talking to you. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, that's one of the things that's extremely fulfilling is, like, asking people those questions that directly get under the surface level. So a little mm-hmm. trick um, it's really cool like connecting with people is instead of if i just said like 
hey Luke, what's up? Like, how's like, how are you doing today? How's the weather there? It's like so surface. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, totally. Kind of very normal octave, but you answer that question a hundred times a day. Whereas what's a little different than what you kind of just asked me is, hey, like, what do you love doing in life? Like, what gets you excited? Mm-hmm. Like from there, you kind of catch them at a higher like emotion and like a higher octave, and they're like, oh, like this excites me. Like they're talking about things that they love and excite them. So you can get them speaking, you can get them speaking on stuff that they want to talk about. And then you have things to pick from in that conversation and keep writing on. If you're interested mm-hmm. in surfing and they're into surfing, keep writing that one. Or, you know, they're interested in like making clothes, like grain coats. Like, mm-hmm. oh my, I love entrepreneurship too. Like, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. So finding little tips and obviously, honestly, just conversation starters on how to make connections with people. Is, it's like really, really fulfilling too. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I know for myself, even just doing all of this and having these conversations and Obviously, a lot of them are very vulnerable, but there is ones that are fun and it's more so of a teaching standpoint where you get to learn, like yourself, how do you better your mindset? What were some things that obviously got you out of that rut and made you get to the point where you are now today? And that's what I love doing is having these conversations. And I think, just like you said, there's so many more ways to go about your conversation. And it's even like I'm going to refer back to texting people and a lot of people will be like, Hey, how's it going? What's up? (laughs) Like, it's so, it's It's just so monotoned almost. Um, and I just think that if like for me anyways, I'm at such a good place now through having all of these conversations and they're in depth conversations. Like I love having them and I could have them for hours or days or forever and it's because I'm learning something about someone I'm not asking them what they did in a day and I mean yeah that's sometimes absolutely like it's good to know but you want to know what drives them what inspires them why they are who they are and where they're aspiring to be in the future and I think that's what's really cool and um obviously oh sorry go ahead very good like one one really interesting thing and like dude i love like i honestly love everything with showcase because that's literally the root of it is like what's your story what are you struggling with like mm-hmm. how are you why are you the way you are yeah like, the most nice ways possible asking that but it's cool because some people i mean people are how they are is not everyone's gonna want to like right away to a stranger tell them their whole life story and like mm-hmm. that's fine they got stuff to do in their day but i got it was someone like i recently met at school they actually asked me, like no actually how are you doing how's your mental like and kind of what's your story yeah and i think if, if a lot more people had like the appreciative perspective of damn that stranger actually cares about like what i want to like do in life and how i feel like i think people would have more empathy and like we could figure out who we who we bond with more and who like wants to go on the same path we are and you like mm-hmm. expedite relationships and get down to quicker passions with each other for sure totally um, and I know you love this stuff. Like, I, yeah. it's so cool. You know, so, like, we were talking the first place, and we are talking, like, yapping away for so long. Yeah. Like, those are the cool kind of conversations that are absolutely fulfilling, and um, you get to see who people actually are. Yeah, absolutely. And I find that you almost make a better connection. Like, even right now, I think we've – I mean, yeah, we've texted and whatnot, but I think we've – yeah, yeah, this is our first, like, third time, and it feels yeah. like I've known you forever. And it's just because we have – really in-depth conversations and actually get to know one another and know where each other's coming from and kind of what drives each other and what passions we have in life and kind of going off of that with passions in life and moving forward you've started something and it's not out yet it's coming soon I've I've seen the coming soon dot 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 but um do you want to tell us a little bit about what it's actually called and what it might be Yes. So the Instagram handle right now is Let's Small Talk. It would be Small Talk, but there's a British band that has the name Small Talk. <laughs> they barely post, but they had it first. So we tried to message Instagram everything we could, but couldn't get it. So it's just Let's Small Talk right now. But at the root of it, the name of it's called Small Talk. Our goal is to redefine what Small Talk is. And the story behind it was when I was struggling quitting hockey, um, the only person I had was my friend Kate. And we would have these great conversations, like so in depth um, for the past five years. And we wouldn't even see each other in person. They would just be connections over text of, hey, like, these are pl- like places in my life I'm trying to improve. You know, these are my realizations. These are, like, transparent vulnerabilities. Hey, I'm stressed about this as a human. Like, what are ways I can help solve? And I think we're just connected on a really deep human level. But we both had no blueprint of, like, we were both in a sad place of, like, how to get to happy. You mm-hmm. know, like, 
or, or what books to read or podcasts to listen to or what kind of conversations I have with people. And so we were just working with ourselves. And after five years, we're in a much more solid place. Not saying we're perfect, but we're in a much more solid place because of these open, vulnerable conversations of attacking problems head on. Mm-hmm. And so we're saying, what if we create a community where all it is is vulnerable conversations and it's just a community of kids like talking about self-improvement, those same things that I just said, like self-improvement realizations and transparency, um, because that's a community that we wanted at that, or we would have loved to have at that time, you know, mm-hmm. kids that are saying, Hey, I read these books, like I'll do the dirty work and summarize it for you. Let's discuss it. How can yeah. we apply it? How does it feel for you? Does it work or not? If it does perfect, let's keep preaching it. If not, like then go away, mm-hmm. but not, and then just like, not even from a standpoint of teaching, like we're just want to be a community of kids like hey join the conversation we're all struggling and human like let's all figure out how to do it together yeah um, for sure but at the root of it it's just going to be a platform on instagram so far where i mean kind of podcast um format a lot of posts that are thought-provoking um things like an example uh, a, a post idea would be like a caption and a quote in a chapel over my head that's saying like do you struggle more in your imagination more than your more than in your reality mm-hmm. so just like kind of having introspection of like you know do i worry am i worrying about something before it even happens if i am i'm putting myself through it twice there's no reason to yeah um creating the community around all transparency of self-improvement and hoping and we're going to normalize vulnerable conversation and hopefully make it cool Mm -hmm. so absolutely yeah Yeah. and i think that's why i love talking to you every time is because that exact thing is you want to normalize vulnerability like vulnerability And that's what I'm trying to do as well. I obviously want people to be vulnerable, speak up, share their stories. And just essentially what I really want to do is just normalize mental health struggles and the topic of mental health. And that's obviously reverts back to end the stigma. And everyone always says that. But I think um, I know I had a conversation with someone yesterday and we just we got chatting and we got into (laughs) deep depth about it all and uh one of the things that he said was i think it's so important that we actually normalize the talk about mental health so when somebody comes to you and says yeah i've been depressed i've done self-harm you don't go oh my gosh you gotta go see somebody right now you gotta whatever and yeah that probably is the right step to make but you gotta normalize the conversation and just be like oh like you have to take it is the same way as you telling me what you had for lunch. Like obviously to some like indifferent um, retrospects, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, that's kind of how you want to do it is you want to normalize that speed, like those um, kind of those subjects. Mm -hmm. And for you saying that, and obviously allowing people to kind of dig within and really think about the topics that you'll be presenting i think that's awesome and i'm i'm so excited to see it i can't wait and obviously we'll have to have you on again once we do that yeah. but um can i can i cut you off too real quick on yeah. that vein too, man like wearing your vulnerabilities like on your chest on your sleeve i think is one of the most courageous things ever and like the fact that you guys are doing like you're doing all this like spearheading it like wearing that head on like if someone talks about what they are like struggling with what they suck at in life no one's gonna like beat them down like they're actually gonna admire that because you're wearing like the one thing they're trying to have from everyone on your sleeve and like that mm-hmm. shows courage and then you could actually tackle and discuss that problem more and like talk about it like it's what you ate for lunch exactly what you said mm-hmm. um so like just quickly like i just need to send that out there just <laughs> appreciation you're pining something crazy crazy like dope and cool like so thank yeah you. i just had to throw that out there yeah thank you very much yeah i um Obviously, I'm very humbled by all the support that has come from it. And like you said, I want to literally hit this as hard as I can. And obviously, I want people to kind of, in a sense, follow in my footsteps in terms of being super vulnerable. And like you said, wearing that on my chest. (laughs) Because to me, I don't don't care what anybody thinks anymore. And that's a play. Like, it took me a long time to get there, but I truly don't. And... If I get support from people, then fantastic. And if there's people that say negative things about it, then they can unfollow me and they don't ever have to look at it again. But um, it's just all in the vein of like, yeah, like what can hurt you now? Like, and all you're doing is spreading love. So, you know, it's yeah. not the wrong thing. Like, reaching. exactly, exactly. Um, so one thing that you did say was you had that um, your friend who you guys would have 
all these conversations about how to kind of get happy and how important do you think it is for people that are struggling with mental health to have somebody to go to that isn't a professional, but it's somebody that you can go to obviously in need. I, yeah, absolutely. 100%. So, um, Kate is one of them that we're running it with. Um, she, so I'll speak on like demographics and like how it relates to like, it'll, it's realizations of, wow, everyone's going through this and having those mm-hmm. people. So I think it is a bit more intimidating where I have respect for anyone that like goes into mental, anything meant like um, a mental hospital, or like sees a therapist, because I don't know if I would have been able to do that. I just would want to deal with it alone. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was out of just like, I don't know. I just, it's something tough for me. So I think having kids that are your age that are into different demographics that you look at their Instagram and think that their life is doing their life's great. But then when you have a conversation with them about your human level issues, they're in the same exact boat and like mm-hmm. vibration as you. That is one of the most important things because that's approachable. That's relatable. That's like, that's like, wow, that's cool. That's, I want to join that conversation. So Kate is one of them for sure. And what's cool about her is her demographic. She's very into like photography, videography. She has one of the craziest eyes for aesthetic. So you look at her Instagram, it's like so beautiful, but like, yes, she's really solid on the, on the inside, but she still has those same issues in, hum, in her human mental that we all have that we all want to discuss. And you mm-hmm. create a closer bond with those kind of people. And then Emma too is one of them. She runs Do You On Track at UBC and she's in the cognitive science. She's like brainiac and reads crazy books, like at a quick speed, but same thing. Like she just, she loves discussing the human issues. And then Allie, she's on the team too. And she's into um, psychology. She's probably one of the most intuitively connected people I've ever met. She's very spiritual body and um she walks around very solid with like that smile on her face where you know like she's glowing but we all love discussing you know what we struggle with and i think having those outlets of kids it's it's probably one of the most important things because it, it gets i don't know if i'd be in the same place where i was now if i didn't have kate starting out and now we have a mini community and then people like you all the way in canada like i'm in california but we're yeah. on having these conversations and tackling these issues you know so mm-hmm. extremely extremely important everyone should reach out to their friends and check on them how they do and say they love them for sure. Definitely. Yeah. I know even for myself, I like to utilize some of my close friends, obviously not too much. And that's why I personally do go see a psychologist or a psychiatrist because for me, that's really important and not because I mean, yes, before it was due to all my mental health struggles, but now it's more so just to keep myself in check and make sure that my mind is, happy and healthy and I'm just constantly keeping a routine where I go see them and I make sure that I'm good and I make sure that I'm solid and so when I have when I have my um kind of my moments I know how to handle it or when I want to vent to a friend it's typically about something that really doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot but it's those typical conversations that you just have on a regular basis and how you go back and forth with a friend. But for me anyways, I have found it super beneficial. And I think if you ask anyone, you should definitely have that one, at least one person that you can kind of run to in any time of distress, whether it's severe or not severe. Um, but uh, another thing that I kind of wanted to ask you a little bit more about, and I have talked to you a little bit about it as well as... Um, you mentioned that you read and you read a lot. How important do you think it is to read and obviously always keep learning? Yeah, I think it's, it's weird. I'm I'm pretty nerdy because I'm in software, but I (laughs) I like the idea of it's software updates. You're kind of always updating that mental software um, to get like the next new little feature that you would uh, apply to your head. So I just, I don't want to come place like do it, but reading is one of the most beautiful things in the world. It's, 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 free knowledge it's just like it's just knowledge that's out there and you just all have to do is look at it and scan it give it a little bit of your time and then apply it so some like almost all the mindset stuff that i've applied it's it's from reading it's it's just reading and applying like some of the most important books and like some of the biggest ones it's it's uh it's just like watching yourself in the third person so like once you disconnect from you know saying i'm sad or i'm mad um and you say like i'm just experiencing sadness right now you kind of can detach from it recognize when you're feeling that emotion Mm -hmm. and then decide if you want to sit in it or if it's something trivial throughout your day like kind of laugh that you're feeling that like laugh that someone called you a little name and like that it's holding control over your mental and if you don't want that you kind of 
you can let go of it and like exhale and kind of laugh at it. It's kind of having those awareness to, you know, understand when you're feeling those emotions or mm -hmm. um, another one is just like, if you stress about something before it happens, like you're putting yourself through it twice because yeah. you know, it's not happening in front of you. The like, best thing you can do is prepare. So it's like, I won't go too deep on those because I hear you yeah. forever, but <laughs> For sure. constantly finding little like software updates, update little mental space, the little bandwidth that you work with all day. Um, it's, it's a very, it's a very important thing, but obviously you can get that information from conversations and mm -hmm. videos, but I love reading cause it's a very peaceful thing. You know, the phone's away and you're just, you're there with your thoughts. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's, and that's like you just said is your phone's away and that's something that's not like, it doesn't yeah, happen yeah. very often, especially in today's day and age. And, um, people that are running businesses, different accounts, what we're doing, like you constantly have to be linked in. And that is something that is, it wears on you a lot. And I know for myself anyways, I've experienced mental health struggles from social media and I've seen a lot of people struggle the same way. And now you start to hear about a lot of people that are taking themselves straight off Instagram or deleting Snapchat. They're deleting all their social media um, apps because they simply think it's, deteriorating their mental health and do you think that's something that like how would you what's your kind of take on all of social media and uh some of the negatives and positives that it actually has it's actually it's actually cool you asked that because i literally thought it was the other day because i'm like finishing up the social dilemma but yeah i think everything in the world everything in the world kind of just is you know mm -hmm. like uh it's like it's like not getting too deep, but like a piano key literally just is. It, it is technically bad or good at a certain time, but it's just a piano key. So it's like mm -hmm. same with social media. Like it's it's just social media. It's just people throwing up the, the highlights of their life. And that can be a beautiful thing. You can find the people that, you know, have what you want and you say like, hey, how did you get there? How can I learn from you? Mm -hmm. So you can take that from if you can control yourself and not get addicted <laughs> from the scrolling aspect. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's a great thing. There are some people that have literally made livings and met like, like forever relationships and I don't know, it's a great community of people on it. But at the same time, the things that are good for you and overconsumption can overcome you. If you, if you don't have the awareness of like, Hey, this is destroying my life. You know, mm -hmm. I think something really interesting, an interesting perspective I read was social media can have the same drugs or effect as drugs on your brain um, and your mental health. Whereas if you are constantly, um, it gets you into holes of like thinking where and it, it's escaping. So if you're constantly unhappy with your life and you're seeking social media to compare yourself to other people's lives and saying, you wish all that, that's coming from, I think, a place of scarcity and a place of, you know, just like, you know, lower vibration, like addiction. Whereas if you like can take a step back and be like, you know what, like those people have what eventually I want in my life. That's so beautiful that they have that. How can I get that? You know, or, or mm -hmm. like, damn, I'm appreciative that like someone has that out in life. Like, you know, I, I can achieve that now. So you got to take it from a, from the perspective that you want and um, you get what you put into it. You know, if you put, if you put appreciation and love into like the post and like the opportunity it prevents, there you go. But if you mm -hmm. put hate into it and judgment, then it'll come right back at you. And I, I think it is a good teacher too, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It I kind is, of, Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. You're good. It, oh. it, is, it is crazy consumable, but yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, that's how I kind of take it as well. I think there is a lot of negatives, but there's also a lot of positives. And for myself anyways, if I was just a, like, if there wasn't social media or there wasn't all these apps, <laughs> We wouldn't be sitting here. So I think you, like everyone that bashes it so much and says that it needs, everything needs to be deleted and everything needs to be gone. You should totally isolate yourself from it. Uh, I don't think that is how you should go about it. I think, like you said, you can learn a lot from people on social media. You can find goals that you want to achieve. You can meet people that will change your life. You can... There's just endless possibilities that are super positive. And what I find anyways with the negativity that comes from it is it's the comments um, through jealousy or just because people are damaged themselves. So they comment nasty things. There's you get so in your head about likes and followers and like we kind of lose sight of what it's there for and it it's be, yeah yeah and it's like you're there to connect with people and you're there to obviously branch out in the best ways you can or enlighten people or like for myself share people's stories and allow other people to see that they're not alone and without social media like i wouldn't 
be doing this and I wouldn't be touching all these like souls around and wouldn't be having these conversations, wouldn't be having this very conversation with you. And so I think that there's so many negatives, but there's also so many like endless amounts of positives and it's almost just how you take it and obviously your balance with how much you're using it. And it even, it even like reflects like what you put out to like prime example is you like you're like you are only shining the positivity like how like what is so good about life into your mm-hmm. platform so like look dude, like everyone's giving it back like i'm wanting to like connect with you and give that back like and you're seeing that from everyone's connecting with you mm-hmm. um as a, as opposed to that shift of like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna speak hate on it because it's like i think a human interaction too if, if if we met up in a bar and like i like portrayed like Oh, dude, he's squaring me up. Like, I walk up to you and I chat, like, what up, bro? Like, trying to buy you. Then you would immediately reflect that back, and then it would just be too funny. Yeah. I think at the start, if I was like, like, super shoulders down, like, what's up, man? How's it going? Like, give you a hug, ask you how you, like, how you, what your story is, or like, you know, why you're here at the bar. And like, immediately you're going to reflect that love back. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it, you got what you give for sure. And yeah. Social media is a great tool for that. Absolutely. And that's one of the coolest things that I've kind of learned as well is, um, just how you treat people is so important. And in reality, somebody like you might not remember somebody, but somebody will remember you or remember the way that you treated them. And one of the things that I always think about, and I don't know why I do this, but every single time I'm driving, I love, I'm a big people watcher. So when I'm driving, I'm looking in every single car that's coming and I'm looking at every person that is around. And all I'm keep thinking about is, I wonder what their story is. I, I wonder what they're going through today. I wonder what happened in their life and why they're driving that way. Like, I wonder where they're going. I wonder, like, it's so, cool. to me anyways, it almost consumes my, it consumes my brain every single time I'm driving. And I could just sit there and not listen to any music, a podcast, nothing. And I could just drive and just constantly think about it because I think it's so cool and just knowing that obviously everyone has a story and you never know, like somebody could have lost a close family member and they were driving to the hospital or somebody could have just gotten a raise and they were driving to tell their significant other. Like there's so many different things that people could be going to. And yeah, I don't know. I just always think about that. And I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know really where I was going with cool, it. But. Like, no, that's adding like color to your life because I mean, everything's interesting to be given enough um, like attention. It's mm-hmm. actually a cool perspective. I'm going to practice. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, yeah I cool. highly suggest. Yeah, I highly suggest. It's you. I, I anyways, I get caught up in it and I almost get lost <laughs> while I'm driving. And yeah, it, it consumes my life sometimes while I'm driving. It consumes my thoughts for sure. But it's interesting to think about and it's it just really proves that everyone does have a story and everyone you just never really know what's going on internally and maybe they're smiling at you as you drive by but maybe they're just super depressed on the inside and I think that's kind of how you have to take it is and referring back to say if you meet somebody in a bar and you walk up and you smile at them chances are they're gonna smile back and if they don't then I'm sure they're struggling with something themselves or they just aren't the nicest. Like, and and that's something you can't control, right? Like you can't control how other people act. And, um, have, have you kind of actually noticed that? Have you noticed that meeting people, um, obviously different encounters that it is tough to kind of make people act. Yeah. Speaking on that, there's one very fascinating thing is, at this school this school year has been crazy because almost every person i met has like s- like honestly what i'm saying like every relationship i've met i've made at the school this year is like so crazy deep and everyone has so much depth i like just it's like dude wow like and i think it was just i started asking the right questions of like what's your like honestly it was like quick questions what's your story in life and like people like will like jump into it if they have time mm-hmm. um and it's it's always the people that, that you wouldn't you wouldn't expect or like even the people you never expect that completely completely vibe with and then I think when you finally get to that point, you're like, be like, damn, like that was cool. I'm glad I asked you about your story and didn't act like I was in a rush. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's for sure something I'm like, tr- I'm working on is just trying to have this connection with everyone else because 
I think at the end of the day, like it, the imprint it has with your relationships on people and like the, the experiences you have when you both like smile connected, like, like, yeah, like same thing. Like that sucks about life too, but I'm trying to be better <laughs> here. Like those are the things that are fulfilling and lasting for sure. Instead of like the material things or the stabs, because mm-hmm. when you sit in your room at the end of the day and like you, you play through your mind and like your memories, like you remember those things, like how those people made you feel kind of what you're hitting on earlier. Yeah. Um, and it's always the people you never guess, like always smile at everyone. You never know, like literally just smiling, saying hi to a, a stranger that could make that person's day or, you know, give them a compliment. Of course, make it a genuine compliment. No, like, exactly. Oh, the shoes and you're like, oh, those shoes are weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like they're sure, like that'll make someone's day for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I think that's, I a... oh, sorry, go ahead. I have a question about your mind. Oh, you can go first, but like, I had a question about your mindset. What was one of the biggest shifts of like a, a quote or something when you were going through all this, like that shifted your whole mindset towards like you were negative and then now you're straight like in the light and you're only being uh-huh. in that light. Um, for me, it was, I would say that everything happens for a reason. And yeah. that was kind of, and also, I guess, okay, so there's part one. And part two is, um, you have to do what you want to do. And so for me anyways, my biggest thing was when like the most uprooting thing of my life to this day and probably for the rest of my life was when I quit hockey. And so out of the blue, I was playing one night and I'm sitting in the dressing room and I go, yep, I'm going to quit tomorrow. And I was just, I was like, yeah, and it was right before the trade deadline and everything, and I was supposed to be getting traded um, to. There was a couple of teams that I was supposed to get traded to, and were you um, in the Uh huh. Yeah, and our team we weren't the best, and so my coach was like, "Obviously, you're 20 years old. Like, we want to let you go where you want to go." And so I was deciding between a couple teams, and then I decided no teams, and obviously I I quit. And I went and traveled, and that was the best thing I've ever done in my whole entire life. And I, I don't. Went on a trip yeah, to I. Crazy, yeah, I don't regret that whatsoever. And the reason why, um, I think I don't necessarily miss hockey. Like obviously, I miss bits and pieces of hockey, and I think I always will. But for myself, anyways, I, I knew that I wanted to travel so bad, and I'd wanted to for years. So when I actually chose to quit, I wasn't just quitting to go work or even just like go jump right into school. I jumped into something that was bigger than myself and something I've always wanted to do. So that was my biggest thing that I've ever done. And my parents weren't thrilled about it. Obviously, my coaches weren't thrilled about it. Nobody was overly thrilled about it except for me, Spence, and our buddy. And we, um, and obviously some of our close friends, like they, they understood and nobody, like none of them really cared, but there was obviously a lot of kind of negativity that came from doing something that big. And when we obviously went traveling and I just sat there and I was like, yep, this is, I did this for me. Like, this is something I did for me. Like, finally I took a step and I'm bettering me. And that's when I realized that. It was, and it was just the way that it all worked. It was the perfect timing. And that's why I say everything happens for a reason. And it was like, none of us were in relationships. So we weren't like kind of held back by those thoughts because when you are in a relationship, obviously you don't want to leave somebody for two months and you almost feel restricted or you feel like you have to call them all the time, that sort of thing. So when none of us were in relationships, Um, so we had like full freedom to go wherever we wanted, whenever we wanted, we could put our phones away for a week if we wanted to, it didn't matter. And, and then after that, it was, I started thinking more and more and my mom was telling me before I left, she's like, why don't you go traveling after the season's over? And I said, no, I'm going now. And I obviously stood up for myself, but it almost seemed ignorant at the time. But now I'm so happy that I went because if I would have waited, I wouldn't have been able to go because of COVID. So oh, it's like that yeah. happens for a reason. And wow, yeah, yeah really? like I just, everything that's been happening in my life, I've, I take it the way that it is and I don't dwell on it. Like if something 
upsets me, I go, okay, yeah, like that happened. And one of my biggest things for sure and that I will always kind of remember now and always remind myself of it is that you can't control how somebody feels about you and you can't control how they treat you. Uh, obviously, you want to treat them with the utmost respect and treat them in very positive ways and obviously shine a light, be happy, do all that you can do to better their life, but you can't force somebody to, I don't like force somebody to like you. You can't force somebody to love you, like especially love you. You cannot force that. And in reality, it's like not everyone is going to like you and that's totally fine. And I just kind of grounded myself, especially through traveling and realized what I have and what I obviously hold really close to me and what is super important to me. And that's kind of where I come from now. That's deep, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. And I could go on and on and on about yeah, all yeah. of it. but That's wild stuff, yeah. Like, hitting on that, the last point you said, because, um, yeah, you want everyone to love you, but obviously that's impossible. It's like mm -hmm. your job's not really to, like, to force everyone to accept, like, what you're giving them, your love or your knowledge. But, I mean, your only job is just to present it. And I think once you realize that, if you just present it to them. It's their fault whether they take it or not, whether if you know it'd be good for them or not, or if it's not, that's fine. But at the end of the day, can't lose sleep on it because if you got to protect your own um, at the end of the day. And yeah. I mean, that's how you better prepare yourself to like give more out to other people. Mm -hmm. But dude, that's courageous. Like going outside, that's so, that's <laughs> I admire that. That's crazy. The yeah. Is a good time. We spent, put up snaps and we had a lot of fun. So. Yeah. Yeah. We had, a, cool. yeah, we did have a lot of fun. What would, I guess, what's a quote that you would, say obviously altered your life yeah i the biggest one it seems so cliche and so cheesy <laughs> but it's real it was real to me it hit me it was one of those where it hit me i was like whoa i fell down in every cell of my body <laughs> like I apply it. it was like seek your own love first and then you'll acquire the love of others along the way mm -hmm. so i think it's even like you feel it anywhere so the, the example that came up in my head that hit me is like a guy coming up to a girl at a bar or a girl coming up to a guy at a bar it was you know the one, the one way where the guy, a person doesn't love himself, he goes up to the girl or the guy and he needs that validation where he's like, Hey, like, uh, like I hope you're doing well. Like, here's my number. Like, I'd love to get coffee with you. And like, he's anxiously waiting for the answer to say yes or no. That yeah. person's going to feel that, that they're not like completely fulfilled in themselves, that they love themselves no matter what. They're going to yeah. be like, uh, I don't know. But like, as opposed to like someone who's just like worked on their self love so much where yes, they want that person to go out with them to coffee, but whether they say yes or no, it's fine. And like that person would approach that situation where it's like, Hey, my name is Brandon. Like, I hope you're having a great day. Like, you're just you're really pretty. And I like, want to get to know you. So, here's my number. If you want to get coffee, like, that'd be cool. And if not, I hope you have a great day and walk away. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're going to be like, yo, like, that guy's so cool. Like, he loves himself so much. I want to know what he's on. So, yeah. Kind of like, that's a scenario that like comes up in my head first. But like, that with anything is if you can tell someone so confident in themselves and say, like, I'm filled no matter what, whether this business fails or not, whether my hobby fails or not that I start. Like, mm -hmm. whether I fail, I'm going to laugh at it. And, like, damn, like, that's going to attract people. And that person's going to never, you know, get sidetracked by um, getting stuck in, like, a, a, a self-sabotaging mindset. Mm -hmm. So For sure. that was one thing to apply. It's like, everyone, love yourself first so that, you know, you just have more to give out to other people. Yeah. What, what, okay. And then, I guess, spinning off of that, what would be a big tip of advice that you have for anyone struggling with mental health or that needs kind of a – needs a – I don't even know how to say it, but a little bit of a booster to get their mind in the right space or obviously find that kind of mental stability that you have and that mental happiness and hitting hitting the love for yourself that obviously everyone aspires to have. Yeah, I think it's the word that pops up is courage. And by courage, I mean like look like everyone go to struggle create strength like look at this page like, look at, like look at the story and everything like there's people out there where yeah it's scary but it's it doesn't take crazy effort all it is is a choice of where your vulnerability is receive say hey i'm struggling with it like you know and try to have like you know have a laugh on your face have a smile on your face everyone's going through this like say hey i'm struggling wear it on your sleeve and people will admire that and actually they will like you will have so much courage for that they will reach out all of a sudden they see that you're trying to help yourself by admitting like out outwardly like what your human nature is and like the love will come flooding in it's just mm -hmm. this is like such a like a beautiful like 
hard perspective of life to be in of like hey like i, I struggle here like i'm so stressed but i look good but like other people like dude me too and then they all like, <laughs> let's, come, let's all like hang out together and talk about this stuff yeah it's just i think coming, coming out with it first um coming out with these other people someone you feel safe with or even if you haven't even come out with that realization to yourself yet talk to yourself and admit like hey i'm actually pretty unhappy you know um i can quietly just send a dm to someone on instagram or a close friend who seems like they're solid and ask them what's like a mindset practice or a book you know that i want to read mm-hmm. um, and kind of just take always take yourself out of your own perspective of, yeah everyone is valid they all have their own reality of yes it's it's tough in it but there i can promise you there are at least a handful of people in the world that would die to have the situation you're living in mm-hmm. and so just you know take that appreciation and like you know what like find things in life that you can be happy for whether it's food um on your plate or roof over your head or just even like the visibility to the, the ability to um like see or breathe you know honestly there's always people having it worse than you so totally. i think spreading that like always spreading that love and admitting that you know i i'm in a place of fear like how can i help people want to help you if you help yourself so mm-hmm. just have that courage i think that's all we can we can say definitely yeah that's super important and i think that's one of the things too is we always forget how fortunate we actually are and some I guess I want to say for myself anyways, I'll speak on behalf of myself. A lot of the times I forget how fortunate that I am. And like you said, yeah, I have a roof over my head. I have food on the table. I have a good job. I get to do this and I get to actually film this on a device. And it's like, I I guess, excuse me. I think there's so many people that, think they have first world problems when in reality it's like oh my keyboard (laughs) isn't quite working properly or oh my one airpod doesn't work and it's it's like that's not a problem like yeah yeah, that sucks you know what like yeah that really sucks but in reality you have somebody that is strut like struggling to get food and struggling to stay alive or somebody is literally on the like their deathbed right now and you're here complaining about this and I think that's what I've kind of started to do as well is just ground myself and whenever I start to think I'm having a bit of a first world problem I stop and I go okay is this actually a problem or is this not a problem and nine times out of ten it is not a problem And I think that's what a lot of people have to do. And especially if you are super fortunate, you need to ground yourself. And for me, anyways, when I went traveling, that was the biggest realization I ever had. And when I was going through all these, all of these towns, if you will, and it's just basically cement, they're like houses, but it's more so just like cement rooms and in dirt and the ground is all dirt and you have kids that have zero ties to any electricity. There's no electricity in the town. And that makes you take a big step back and just realize how grateful and how yeah. lucky we are to have what we have. And especially even the ones that don't have a lot here, you can almost even look at it in that light and say, I have a whole heck of a lot more than they do. And that's what's, I always 100% until the day I die will suggest that everyone travels and everyone sees different parts of the world and sees how people live in different parts of the world. Because I think it's super important to obviously realize where we actually do come from for those that are living in Canada or the States. Um, And honestly, anywhere that's not in essentially a third world country that's struggling with poverty or in a financial state of distress. So I think there's, there's a lot of whole foreign life. Yeah. Ultimate yeah. empathy right there is what you're, yeah, you have, that's, that's good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, for the most part, that's kind of what we, it's kind of what we have for today. But, um, once again, just refresh us on, it's let's small talk on Instagram. Let's small talk, yeah, with uh, one S and one underscore at the end. Awesome. Um, we could throw that up, um, like under this post, yeah. Perfect. And then also, um, can people reach out to you? And if so, where could they find you via social media? 
Yeah, 100% um, like Instagram. Uh, my name is Brandon Berg underscore uh, with the A and an O, the Brandon. <laughs> Um, just reach out. I love having these kind of conversations. Like I'll hop on FaceTimes with everyone and, um, just love discussing like ha- how to hack the mind, honestly, in a positive mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And I know for a fact that once let small talk is up or just small talk, how you like to say it? Yeah. Uh, once that is up, we will 100% have another podcast and we'll do a bit of a collaboration. It'll be really fun. And obviously we'll get down to some vulnerable talks. So. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, thank you so much. Appreciate everything you're doing. This is unbelievable. Let's do it again soon. Of course, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> All right. See you, Luke. See ya. Okay, see ya. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Struggle Creates Strength. Struggle Creates Strength is a mental health platform exemplifying that everyone has a story. I hope everyone enjoyed Brandon's story, and I hope that you can use some of the tips and tricks that he left us with today. If you do want to reach out to Brandon, which I highly suggest you do, I will leave his Instagram in the bio below. And if you want to reach out to me or you want to come on the podcast, you're more than welcome to reach me at Struggle Create Strength on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or you can go to my website at strugglecreatestrength.com. Podcasts will be posted Mondays and Thursdays at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you, and just remember, everyone has a story.